G'day from sunny Bahrain, where we're about to kick off the 2023 season, and I can tell you exactly what every one of the 20 drivers, plus a few team principals, is driving to this race in eight seconds' time. As usual, there's a fair variety of cars being driven by the 20 drivers. Let's kick it off with Pierre Gasly driving a Haval. This is a small SUV. It's made by a Chinese manufacturer. Now, Esteban was driving the exact same model, but a different color. But over the weekend, he drove two different cars. Why? Well, on the second night of testing, he went out to the car park very late, couldn't get his car started, thought it was an electrical problem. So they called the uh, rental company, the rental company eventually sent someone out there with a new battery, put the new battery in, still didn't work. So Esteban and his crew were out there for two hours waiting to get away from the track. The problem's been solved now, but if you follow Esteban on social media, you might have seen his post. He was a bit uh, grumpy at the time about it. As you can imagine, he's had a long day and he wants to get back to his hotel and his day was extended by two hours. Let's jump next to the Red Bull drivers of Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez driving a pair of Ford Expeditions. These retail for between 53 and 85,000 in the US. Uh, but interestingly enough, if you look at the rego plate on this one, this was registered in Saudi Arabia. And of course, that's just over the causeway. But I don't know why they were driving Saudi Arabian vehicles. And where do they park these cars, I hear you cry? Well, just outside the paddock is a car park for drivers and team principals. And if you want to catch a glimpse of your favorite driver, you might want to wait outside these gates, which will give you a chance, I guess, each morning and each evening. I would like to have told you that uh, both McLaren drivers were driving McLarens, but no, that wasn't the case. They were in simple Nissan patrols. When I say simple, they're still quite an expensive car. And the patrol actually took the Guinness World Record for towing the heaviest plane with a production car in 2013, when it pulled a 170 ton cargo plane for a distance of about 50 meters in the UAE. Oh, and if you're going to drive a gas guzzler, this would be one of the best countries in the world to drive it. Why? Because fuel is so cheap. I think this is the cheapest fuel we see all year on the calendar. How cheap? Around 50 US cents a litre. How does that stack up against Europe? That's an incredible saving. Next up, let's have a look at what the Alfa Romeo drivers were driving and it wasn't an Alfa Romeo. This is what they were driving, both in Jeeps. Grand Cherokees to be exact, and quite dirty as you can see here because the sand very quickly builds up on these cars. These are worth around 77,000 US dollars in the US. Comes in a five or seven seater, luxurious interior, and it even has a drowsy driver detection system which tracks the vehicle's movement and the driver interaction to spot patterns of drowsiness and then can orally or visually alert them. At this point, I need to say thank you to Canity.com, the world's best online staff training platform. If you're looking to enhance the customer service skills of your staff, you will love Canity.com. Hundreds of short, sharp training videos on an easy to use platform, Canity.com. Shall we talk about the Aston Martin drivers? Yes, we shall, and one of them was quite late in, that was Lance Stroll. He is uh, going to be driving this weekend, but of course he has uh, some problems with his wrists. We'll see if uh, he can manage the rigors of driving driving a car with those injuries. He was in a DBX, always drives a DBX. But his teammate, Fernando Alonso, was in a Toyota Land Cruiser. Four of the drivers were driving top level cars and I'll start with um, George Russell in this magnificent white AMG G63 G-Wagon. These are pricey in the US, you'll pay 180 to 350,000 US dollars for one of these, a four litre V8 with a nine speed transmission. And his teammate, Lewis Hamilton, was in the exact same car, just a different color. I've seen a few of these out on the roads here, and I've got to tell you that driving on Bahrain roads is a little bit of a challenge. There's no law against tailgating, I'm told, and as such, it's a bit of a sport. At 120 kilometers an hour, it's not uncommon to see a car less than a meter behind you, which gets you full attention, I promise you. From one of the priciest cars in the driver's car park, to one of the most affordable. Alpha Tauri drivers, Nick DeVries and Yuki Tsunoda were both in these Civics, not even Type Rs. These are modestly priced, start around 20,000 US dollars and don't look the greatest. What about Kevin Magnussen? Was he driving a big SUV as he has a want to do? Yes, he was. This time he was in a Land Cruiser, white in color with a baby seat in the back 
And uh, if you're wondering what these rent for here in this country, it's around 70 BD, which is about 290 Aussie dollars a day, around 200 US. Nico Holkenberg was in a Nissan Platinum Black V8 Patrol. Or is it navy blue? Could be either. I think we've only got four drivers left. Two of those are from Williams, Alex Albon, in a white Nissan Patrol. This is the 70th anniversary edition. And what does this mean? It means it uses normal unleaded fuel. And his teammate Logan Sargent rolled up in a Toyota Land Cruiser 300. And I found an interesting story online about this that uh, apparently when this car was released in Japan, every buyer had to sign a pledge that they wouldn't sell this car for 12 months. What happened if they sold their car within the 12 months? Well, they would be barred from buying another car from a Toyota dealer. And last but not least, Ferrari drivers, not in Ferraris, instead in Maseratis. The Ghibli, to be exact, a four-door luxury sedan. It's the V6 twin turbo, a smooth looking car that starts in the US at around $83,000. And they drove the same models last year. And here they are with the number one parking spots outside their hotel. That's all 20 F1 drivers, but let me quickly tell you about some of the team principles. We had Gunter Steiner roll up in a Mercedes on a few days of testing, an E350 to be exact. However, on media day here yesterday, he changed it to a Lexus. Why? Well, the other one had a malfunction, so he was forced, like Esteban Ocon, to change cars. Here's Andreas Seidel in a Jeep Grand Cherokee, and this year, of course, Andreas is dressed in black, having last year been dressed in orange. And I asked him how he liked that, and I mentioned the fact that it was a very hot color to wear, especially in climates like this. And he said, yes, but his kids say he looks slimmer in it. Does he? I don't know. Zach Brown, he was in a Mercedes GLE 454 Matic, Fred Vassa in a Maserati Levante, and I was driving a Toyota Camry. There you have it, uh, about 25 different cars being driven by F1 luminaries to the track. If I had my pick, I'd be going with an AMG G63, I think. Quite a remarkable looking vehicle and very popular out here in the Middle East. A reminder that if you like Gunter Steiner, you can still pick up one of his hand-signed and numbered prints at kimelman.com along with photo books. I do one for every race and every driver. And on that site, you can order wall art along with my merchandise. You'll find all of my images at prostarpics.com. And for my best images live from the track and all during the week, I'm gonna recommend you go to Instagram and search at Kim Illman. Thank you for watching. And stay passionate. I'm struggling here, aren't I?